close to the speed of light is a kind of elixir of life. Because time slows down close to the speed of light, special relativity provides us with a means of going to the stars. And welcome back, everybody, to Llama Escapes. We're rolling on, still doing this DK's task on day 27, and there's a second warrior's ring. Yeah, I still don't have the hatchet yet. We've grinded and grinded through this task. Uh, let's see, how many kills am I up to so far? Yeah, we're up to 171 kills. I left with just one kill left on the task because I'm going to go and extend this to still hopefully end up getting a dragon hatchet maybe in the in that extra kill count it'll give me. But yeah, two, two warrior rings, one berserker ring. I mean, that's decent luck on the rings, to be honest. They're like a 1 in 64, so, you know, I'm a little lucky on those. But uh, a 1 in 64 for any ring, not, not for a given one. Um, but the dragon hatchet, you know, it's the one thing I need from this. Just, just, just give me the drop. I, I can't call myself lotion man anymore. <laughs> All right. Taking part in my second raid. This time I pet tanked and I actually managed to survive the tank. I mean, I was, I was somewhat saved by a friend of mine. I tried to defuse the bombs for people and a lot of people just, just hopped out away from them. Um, yeah, so that that didn't work out quite right. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, we're we're probably gonna get the loot. Okay, here's my second loot, and that is that is not bad. Uh, oh, I can't re-roll. Well, wait. Let me let me grab my re-roll token, which I have in here, and then collect loot. Oh, I yeah yeah re-roll. Okay. I didn't end up hitting what I was looking for. That's a lot of crystal keys, though. Uh, but that's that's pretty decent. Oh, wow. I thought I had lost my armor set, but it just, like, re-equipped itself to me. So I guess you don't lose it on death. It just stays attached to your body. That's, um, that's nifty. All right, we went for the back-to-back. -back. This time I died during the pet tank. Uh, I guess I can't tank the magic pet. I was just taking too much damage. Uh, not entirely sure what was going on there, but anyway, uh, time to time to get back there and and see what happens. <laughs> Hope I didn't ruin the kill. Okay, it looks like I'm the only person I killed with my mistakes, so that's fine. Uh, so basically, when the pet spawned, I was praying the wrong thing. Uh, I was doing pet tank two again. Uh, Tuz spawned in front of me. I instantly, you know, got the voke off, and then I took a almost six k hit apparently, um, which you know, six k being almost my entire life pool and my best food only healing for 1500 i uh i think i hit about 200 hp uh at least twice <laughs> so the first hit came in i switched my prey right uh and the second hit came in right after i uh, you know the next tick right after i ate and you know i was down to like 200 hp again um yeah i somehow recovered and it looks like the the kill's gonna be fine okay kill done Reroll token had. Didn't hit it this time. Let's reroll again. Dang. That's okay. I, I was crazy lucky the first time around, so I cannot complain. All right, let's see. We've got 35 more kills to go. We, we got this, right? I knew. I knew we would get there. He never misses, okay? Sometimes he misses for just a second, but... It always comes back around. There's the hatchet. We're done with DKs. Now, importantly, I am going to stay here to finish off the task because, one, it's going to get me level 67 Slayer, which I believe is a little bit of a milestone. No, I thought I thought there was another unlock there at 67 for some reason. Um it, it might be it might be a quest, uh, but importantly, this is going to put me past 200 total boss kills. So not only have I unlocked the War Retreat Teleport, um, which is fantastic, incredibly useful, right beside a bank chest, free to use, instant teleport, etc. But very importantly, 
having 200 boss kills gives you access to an altar right beside it. So it's like my good old Falador Lodestone Teleport, except me saves me like 40 tiles of running to the nearest bank. Awesome. Yeah, I, I'm ecstatic right now. And there's the completion of my first and probably only Dagonoth task for a long time. I don't imagine I'll be coming back here for anything. Uh, there's nothing I really want in particular, um, but you know, I'm happy with what I got. Dragon Hatchet is what I was ultimately looking for. Uh, oh, and regarding 67 Slayer, yes, it is a quest requirement. It's actually a requirement for Branches of Darkmire. So I'm getting quite close to those requirements, uh, especially because the woodcutting thing can now can now be done with the Dragon Hatchet. So this is where I'm ending off, you know, just three different drops and 206 total kills. So that does mean I get the uh, the Prayer Altar in War's Retreat. Claimed a fire making daily challenge and saw that I now have all levels I need for forgiveness of a Chaos Dwarf. Now, this is a quest I'll go in and do. I might farm them some for hand cannons whenever I get around that level range, right? Because hand cannons are good to augment, get explosive components uh, for, for crackling. Um, so it wouldn't hurt to have a few of those I don't think I'm going to go for the one or two dragon picks that you ultimately need for the Earth and Song. At least, I'm not going to go for those before Max Cape. Um, haven't, haven't fully decided yet. I mean, it'd be nice if I end up hitting one. But at the same time, I, I kind of did the math and found that it's not worth it. Uh, so that's the plan for the time being, at least. But I'll go ahead and knock out this quest pretty soon, given that I am still wanting 300 quest points. I'll limit myself to something like, I don't know, five or ten hand cannons. And if I don't see the first pickaxe by that point, then I'll drop it. If I do get a pickaxe really, really early, then I will stay for the second one. Because I found that it's, uh, at least if I remember my math correctly, uh, ultimately the Earthen Song costs you two or three more hours than it saves you. Um, but if you end up getting really lucky on either of the dragon pickaxe drops, then then that uh, you know that difference goes away. I should say the same uh, for, you know, getting a lucky dragon pickaxe from Crystal Triskelions later. If I end up rolling one of those and I haven't gotten a dragon pickaxe drop yet, I'll go and farm one, uh, assuming my, you know, mining level is still decently low at that point. Well, this has been a long time coming, but there we go. We ticked over and we now have access to the Ports District Fishing Boost. This is fantastic. Uh, actually, fishing in ports is already really fast, and it's just going to speed up uh, way more. I think it's like a flat 10% increase to success rate or something. It means that you basically catch a fish every single tick, and it's incredibly good. So from now on, I'm not going to focus on doing my obelisks anymore. I'm just going to do daily scarabs, and the amount of fishing I do is eventually going to get me this magic carpet. On to day 28 now. Haven't been making any clips regarding this because I knew it was going to be a really long grind, but I have been saving up Necronium Bars. So I'm up to 920. Um, I might need just a few more to end up getting me to my goal, which is level 80 smithing. Uh, but this will at least get me most of the way there and, you know, I'll, I'll sort out the end of the grind uh, if I have to some other way. Uh, but anyway, it's time to actually turn these into burial sets and then deposit those. See, I realized that my divination is getting quite close to 80 for invention, and I thought, hey, what better time to actually get my smithing up than once my smithing is up over level 80, I get my mining over level 80, get the upgraded pickaxe, and then we go do gym rocks to get crafting to 80. So I'm here on Mascab to do my daily Nimi forests, and I learned that there are these different one-off things that you can do for extra reputation. I've probably done them in the past, I just don't happen to remember it. Uh, but in this case, I can hand uh, these four creatures, or little critters, in to Arod the Environmentalist. It gives you an achievement, it gives you 4,000 Hunter XP, and a lamp for 15k Hunter, which is actually pretty decent, uh, and 275 total reputation uh, with the Gobies. Something else that gives you about 250 reputation is this right here, where you take these five stone fragments and you use them all on the statue. It's just a lore thing. 
Uh, and the reason I'm getting 55 here and I got 275 before was because I have the, the archaeology relic on. Uh, but those are nice little one-offs. They take, you know, all of five minutes to take care of, give you a good chunk of hunter XP and 500 or 550 overall reputation, which is nice. So this Beastmaster was probably my worst performance yet. I ended up dying almost instantly to the pet because chargers popped onto me, which sucked. Uh, but hey, I guess it worked out in the end. Uh, and I may have a, a reroll token outside. I should check that before looting. Yep, last reroll token. So here we go. Collect loot. Collect Beastmaster loot. And that is not great. It's not what I'm looking for. Okay, wow. That is actually a really solid hit. I mean, the Necrite and Phasmatite Stone Spirits are a little late. Uh, Magic Logs I actually need for a number of different quests, so that's nice. And uh, Rocktail Sharks is always, is always solid. So I will take it. Sadly, no more rerolls for a while. Uh, but that's okay. That's something to work towards. Steadily working away at that smithing goal has finally gotten us to 50% respect again. So here is the second piece of the blacksmith's outfit, and it's the gloves. Nice. So I can actually stop using the smelting gauntlets and start using these. And on to day 29, completion of Back to the Freezer, the last of the penguin quests for some nice XP drops. Uh, yeah, wanted to go ahead and get that taken care of getting that Slayer level, Runecrafting level, and a Divination level. Okay, finally able to complete this quest, A Fairy Tale Part 2. Time to move on to Part 3, and let's use this lamp on Herblore. Fairy Tale Part 3 complete for... I mean, the quest points are nice, the watering can is actually pretty nice, and uh, hey, not having to use a Draymon staff ever again? Also fantastic. Not to mention that quest is a requirement for a number of other very late game grandmaster and master level quests. Rocking out quest complete for a very important XP drop, which is 80 smithing. Yeah, I lined that one up perfectly. So there's 80 smithing out of the way for invention. We are closing in on 80 divination, which we should be there in a day or two. And the last thing is crafting, so I guess it's time to get started on that. As soon as we tick over to 80 mining, I'm going to get Bainite and go ahead and get myself an upgraded pickaxe, of course. Craft myself uh, some upgraded melee gear, potentially. Uh, but most importantly, gym rocks. And I'm back here doing some more ED3. Got my attack level up to 75 so I can wield Vanquish. Uh, this is kind of relevant as whenever I start doing like jungle strike worms. They're actually weak to stab, I believe. And this is a spear, so it stabs. Uh, another good way to train uh, my melee combat stats. Also got my range level from 65 up to 77. Um, just shy of 78, and that's because there's some other training I will do. But that's 78, so that Sun Spear requirement is taken care of, which is actually the highest quest requirement for ranged. Sorted out. And here's and here's the loot. Um, I got two rare relics, which I actually just learned, uh, which is nice. <laughs> uh, 1.3 mil straight cash. Uh, okay, huge plated. These huge spiky have been here since previously. Uh, the teak planks are nice, though I should I should bank those. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll bank the dragon longsword and I'll get bank the U logs because those might come in handy. Uh, of course, I'll cook these. Just just some good stuff all around. The wild part about these salvages, though, that's 168 times 40,000, which comes out to just about 6.7 mil in high alks. I'm not going to burn through them just yet. I'm going to wait till I actually have the alchemizer machine uh, from Invention, because that's that's just going to save me some time. And this is another interesting milestone. If I alk these two rare relics, we have our first green cash deck, just over 10 million GP. Now that is a nice feeling. Okay, well, on to day 30, and I got the mining pet. So that's... <laughs> so that's cool. Uh, yeah, there's there's Rocky unlocked. I was just closing in on level 81. Um, huh, didn't expect that. 
there is 81 mining as mentioned which is a big level as it unlocks red sandstone and crystal flecked sandstone later on so this is something that i have to add to the list of dailies uh it's also going to help give me some daily crafting xp though once i can uh you know turn these into flasks and uh banking up flasks is is always good as i cut this last gem I get level 79, and you must be thinking, wait, that's not, that's not level 80. Well, I'm an hour away from weekly reset, and there's something important that I haven't done yet. One of the big weeklies, and that is Tears of Guthics. One big thing about Tears of Guthics is that after 80 mining and 80 crafting, you can upgrade your bowl. So that instead of 180 XP per point, you get up to 300 experience per point or per tier that you gather uh, in the D&D each week. That's a pretty significant difference. An additional 120 XP. If you gather, you know, 100 tiers, it's 12K. 200 tiers, that's 24K. And the way that I see it is if I get level 80 now, then I can upgrade my bowl. I get an additional, call it 15,000 summoning XP. And that's a nice little kicker. Also, crafting is already quite slow to begin with. It's maybe 50 to 60,000 an hour. So I'm going to I'm going to do this. I'm going to talk to Chuck and I'm going to claim my rewards. Yeah, and use them all in crafting. So I believe that I've done the math right. Uh, I'm going to start by just buying five instead of six. Yeah, that's a lot of penguin points. And let, let's use all of these on crafting. Use all. Up. Uh, boom. Okay, that's 151,000. And I think this last one should get me the level. Let's just see. Boom. No, I'm just shy. 5k shy. Okay, that's fine. But I realized that I wasn't going to end up getting this level 80 uh, in time for reset so i realized that you know 15k summoning is a nice enough kicker to that 180k crafting or so that i just claimed uh that it's worth it over herblor at least in my opinion i'm not all that worried about getting herblor to 99 in the long run uh it, it should be fairly straightforward and and made somewhat easier than before actually uh since big game hunter has been you know, put into the game, and those dinosaurs give quite a lot of XP uh, for Herbler. And since I do have about 100 gems left to mine, I figure I should show everyone the actual route that I normally take. So the only gear that I use is my upgraded gem bag and my archaeology journal. I use Wars Retreat Teleport to get to a bank chest. I use the journal teleport to take me to the Alcarid Gem Rocks. And in case you haven't noticed, there actually is a shortcut here at the Gym Rocks, which is super useful. So I hop over this shortcut, and after quite a bit of mining, generally about 150 to 200 gems uh, between my gym bag and my inventory, I teleport back, bank it all, teleport back here, and yeah, that's, that's what I've been doing for quite a while the past two days. And there we finally have it, level 80 crafting. Now just to wait a little over an hour to do our last Guthics cache to get 80 divination and unlock the big skill. Okay, so I ended up getting 193 tiers this time around, which is quite good. 57,900 XP drop for summoning is <laughs> nuts. Exactly total level 1900 which is awesome. Uh, but I'm just gonna do a little bit of math to see how worth it that was. So by using my penguin points on crafting instead of Herblore, I essentially earned myself an additional 22 and a half thousand summoning XP this week. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I think that's worth it in the end. It wasn't that many uh, that many penguin points. It was only about two weeks worth uh, whenever you're getting the maximum amount of points that I can get now. So yeah. Not that bad. Pretty solid trade-off, in my opinion. Importantly, level 52 summoning unlocked the Spirit Terror Bird, which is fantastic, considering you can, well, you use your gold charms on it, uh, something that you almost always have an excessive number of. 
Uh, and you can buy the tertiary that you need with Robert Mead Packs in Ooglog. So yeah, this is going to be a great pat, a uh, great pouch to use. Um, fantastic for invention, for getting uh, powerful components, uh, and I think a few other component types as well. Uh, and ultimately fairly cheap uh, to, to make these compared to other pouches. So yeah, really great uh, unlock there. Just fletched up a few maple shield bows so that I could get my final strange rock. Thought I should go ahead and complete this. Um, I know it's a time gated thing for comp cape eventually, but honestly, I, I just like the extra XP that it kind of gives occasionally. Uh, it helps out giving you some XP and slower skills just by making sure that you knock this out every now and again. So when I'm a few rocks away, I'm going to try to uh, to take care of these. Well, my last cache was not quite enough, but there we go. 80 Divination, which is Invention Unlocked. So time to head to Valador and start working with this bad boy. And everyone knows the first thing you do when you unlock Invention as an Iron Man is catch yourself a few Black Salamanders. Though some people might forget that you can come back after Back to the Freezer and claim Invention. So, level 11 and at least level 10 in all skills broadcast. There we go. Ah, uh, yes. Everyone's favorite part of Invention. Gathering energy. So I augmented my first black salamander, and I've been working on Slayer point boosting. Uh, accidentally skipped the 70th task. I think I also did like the 40th task or something like that, but it, it happens. Sometimes you're just going so fast you don't notice. Um, yeah, greater demons. This is very difficult for me to decide whether or not I just kill the little newbie greater demons or if I actually go to Krill. Okay, so I broke out the hit chance calculator. I, I did a little bit of math, and it looks like I'll be okay to do Krill, so I'm going to give it a shot. No fucking way did that just happen. Oh my word. I went in with no god protection, so I was almost out of food. I had six desert souls left whenever I entered that boss fight. And I'm like, you know what? I think I can do it. Let's let's just go for it, okay? First kill. I just, I gotta show the proof. That's the second time I've gotten a drop on one KC. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Literally one kill. <laughs> and, and it's one of the best drops I could have gotten. <laughs> Okay, the garb was the only other good drop, and the lunar torso is, is straight up better than the lunar legs in terms of bonus, so I just, I cannot believe that just happened. You know, I, I don't think there's any way to top that. I'm, I'm just gonna say, that's the end of day 30, okay? <laughs> happy, happy one month to me, gown of subjugation acquired. Okay, dude, this is just absurd. It's it's also kind of insulting, but but really, it's just absurd. Another gown. I don't know my kill count now, and it's a little too hard to check it because they're gonna spawn. But Krill, yeah. Well, I finally remembered to turn on loot share, and the first kill I got a ward of subjugation, so that's something. Uh, <laughs> a better T70 shield, uh, better than the crystal ward at least, so that's a, a nice little upgrade for whenever I need to do some tanking. Um, I think I'm going to do maybe one more, uh, one more run in here with loot share on to see if I can get sacrifice and devotion unlocked. Um, I don't know. I might finish up the task. I'm not sure. It's a little slow. Uh, it's only a few kills per trip because, well, I have to get KC every single time and, and KC ends up, uh, you know, taking quite a lot of time. And then I have a limited inventory, so there's only so much food I can bring and I do have to use food. So, uh, yeah, it, it's going though. It's going. Well, I was not expecting that large beam, but my first effigy? <laughs> uh, okay. I might be able to open that in a few weeks. No fucking way we did it both augmentable items that i could have acquired here oh my word
I am, I am astonished right now. Absolutely taken aback. 47 KC. Holy shit. A garb, two gowns, <laughs> and, and the shield. You know what? Um, <clears throat> I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> well, I didn't end up getting devotion or sacrifice from Krill, but I can't really complain about my luck at this point, can I? Quest complete the death of chivalry. And why I'm doing this now as opposed to, uh, you know, a different time is because I want the Skull of Remembrance to train my thieving a little bit. Uh, I was working on Desert Treasure and I got to the part where you need lockpicks and burn through 20 real quick. So I think it's time to actually work on thieving, get that uh, unbreakable lockpick added to my tool belt. I've tried to explain this a few times now, and it just isn't coming out quite right. So I'm going to make this a nice little edited portion of the video. Crazy, I can, I can use editing skills. So, my current goals include 300 quest points. Getting 300 quest points would allow me to block the 6th Slayer task that I need to block in order to Slayer Point boost in Lumbridge uh, with Jacqueline. Whenever I get this 6th sixth, sixth slot blocked, that will allow me to grind through my Slayer, get a number of different Slayer unlocks, with the goals of leveling my invention. Not exactly finishing the Slayer grind right away, but leveling up my invention to at least level 27 to get a number of different very important unlocks. One is to get it past 24 to unlock the Urn Enhancer. One is to unlock the Fishing Rod Omatic. And another unlock there is to at least have Augmented Item level 10 available so that we can get the best XP rates possible through invention. Then the next goal is to do woodcutting and construction up to at least level 75 so that I can do Nomad's Elegy. Completing this quest will allow me to actually use the Urn Enhancer, and that'll make the next grind a lot easier. The next grind being Fishvention up until the mid-80s. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to stop here, but importantly, uh, after level 80, you unlock Sailfish, which is the third fish that you need for Big Game Hunter, which you can acquire through Swarm Fishing. Those are first unlocked at level 80. They're a lot more common after level 85. I think somewhere there in the mid-80s is really ideal uh, for actually doing this Swarm Fishing to get some of those fish stockpiled so that I can start working on Big Game Hunter. Once Big Game Hunter is available as content, I'm going to do it until I get at least two Maddox. And somewhere in there, doing this big game hunter grind, doing this swarm fishing, I'm also going to get my smithing to level 85, and I'm go going to unlock Prif. Doing these things will unlock the Evigy Incubator D&D, will unlock the Garajo Resource Dungeon eventually, will unlock the Crystal Flecked Sandstone for Crystal Flasks later, and all kinds of other things. And then finally, after all of this is done, and I know this is like two or three weeks of grinding that I'm laying out, I'm going to get archaeology straight to 98. I don't want to do too much invention without 98 archaeology unlocked, because that is when you get the big boost to your divination, at least to energy gathering, and that's when you can do the good old slam dunk of all of your memories at once with the relic. That is my current goal. Those are, those are my current goals that I have laid out. I don't know if they're exactly optimal, but I think they are. This is how I'm going to approach everything, and that's what we're working on. So we started grinding at about 76 thieving and got almost 84 knocked out, uh, about three quarters of the way there. Yeah, finally unlocked. Oh no, I almost hit the wrong one. Lockpick, please, thank you. Add tool belt. There we go. Let's finish Desert Treasure. Looks like RuneScape is giving me a, f a few problems today. This is this has been happening somewhat consistently. I uh, <laughs> it just it won't load. I don't know. And there is completion of Desert Treasure for three more quest points, two hundred and ninety-two so far.
And with the burial of these five bones here, I will earn 13,750 prayer XP in total, which is quite nice. It's completion of Hope Spears Will, the mini quest. Uh, it's the only thing it gives, but it's a, it's a nice chunk of XP for five minutes of your time. The Curse of Zeros mini quest complete for ghostly robes, whatever. 10 kudos, which is nice, and a 10,000 XP lamp from the Historian. Like 200 cleaning finds later, I finally got the stupid clean necklace so I can make a dig site pendant. Pretty sure it's a requirement for an achievement diary for Varrock, so yeah, there, there we go. And claimed a few more lamps from the Historian, which I will just put straight into Herbler. Says so 1k, and this should be 10k. That's nice. That is level 60. Uh, okay, well, I came to do some elite dungeons, and, uh, <laughs> well, there's, there's the street pet. That's, that's pretty cool. At, ex at 1, 2, 3, 4 XP. Uh, that's, that's, that's pretty neat. All right, looks like this is where I'm ending up 78 attack and 77 strength. Uh, not sure if we're going to be doing a little bit more of this tomorrow, but... And, and I know, I said I was going to be done with it, but look, 78 and like 81, if I can get there, is basically where I want to end up, because that's almost all of the quest requirements done for Melee. And this time around, we got two more rare relics, about 800k, more coins, and yeah, this stack is just getting huge. That is, that is almost 10 mil right there, isn't it? Wait, 236 times 40? Yeah, that's <laughs> that's 9.5 mil GP just sitting there waiting for me to get my Alchemizer unlocked. So, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm pretty content with where we're at. Um, again, the only other ED3 I might see myself doing is getting to 81 strength. Uh, I kind of came to this realization uh, that I'm perfectly fine training melee in elite dungeons because I'm not going to be training it later using slayer generally i might do some slayer with like an entune crystal halberd later on um if it, if it seems efficient uh but originally my plan was to train melee through vires and i've realized that i can just train melee through things like elite dungeons and leave vires to actually just be be maged because mage ends up being a lot better aoe okay so this time i pk'd my friend but I pet tanked all the way through, and I was there until Beastmaster got down to 30k HP with like three people left in the arena. <laughs> Basically, the pet jumped off of me, I voked it, and it splashed, uh, and then it was on cooldown, and it 9 k my friend who was basing. So, very scuff kill, but it worked in the end. Let's see what the loot is. Alright, we won't have rerolls for a long time, but let's see. Beastmaster. Hey. Can you hate it? No, you cannot. Rocktails and sharks are perfect. Techie is nice. Black Dehyde is some money. Quest complete. The Curse of Arab for just one quest point, but that's okay. It's an important one done. Devious Minds. Quest complete. One more down. Important quest complete. The Temple at Sintiston. So there's two more quest points. A lot of XP, actually. Uh, so this one's going into Herb Lore, because, obviously, and the combat ones are going straight into Summoning, uh, which is just, yeah, great source of XP. Boom, uh, there's 56 Summoning done, and Ancient Curse is unlocked after I read the hymnal, yeah. Yes, replace my prayers. There we go. Uh, so... Yeah, not going to stick on the curse book yet, because obviously I don't have all the protections, but that's a nice unlock. Day 32, and it's finally time to get started on Dimension of Disaster, because I, I want the quest points. Shield of Erev complete. And to finally hit 300 quest points, there's Demon Slayer done. Let's use these lamps, and let's get out of here to claim some dice. Two more dice used, two mil more added to the coin pouch, which is just nuts. And both of these are fortunate components. And here's my weekly Tears of Guthix. I kind of wanted to put it into construction, but then I remembered that invention was my lowest skill. So, well, that was, that was a little bit of an oopsie.
Uh, but hey, it's a, a nice little boost to invention. Maybe it'll stop me from, from having to make a second uh, salamander to level five. And finally, here we go. The perfect block list. Um, I know that I've mentioned it before. I don't think I've exactly showed, but if you block exactly these six tasks, all other tasks offered by Jacqueline can be done in the Lumbridge Catacombs. So you use NPC Contact, the Lunar Spell, to get a new task. You go run, uh, run to the right spot, burn through the task in, you know, all of a minute. And, uh, yeah, get the next one. You can chain nine tasks in something in the range of, like, you know, five to eight minutes, generally. Um, which makes, you know, it takes nothing uh, compared to a normal Slayer task to begin with. Uh, and it means that every single normal task that you do is just going to be a, a 10 point, a 50 point, a 100 point boost. Uh, which is which is really nice. Been a while since I unlocked anything really useful for player on farms, but here I am in the ranch out of time, getting breeding and small dinosaur pens. Um, yeah, breeding frogs, it's probably pretty decent XP per day, so I figure it's something that I should really stay on top of. I already have a male and female pair that I got uh, previously, though they are diseased and stuff because I haven't been feeding them. Uh, so yeah, this is something I'm going to add to my ever-growing list of dailies. And there is the 100th task done for a 225-point boost. Now this is why I'm spending all my time in these dang catacombs. Got an Abbey Spectre task for task number 110, and there's an Ectoplasmator on the first kill. That's a nice little uh, unlock, I guess. Uh, eventually, it'll become attuned, um, but... You know, I've never cared that much for the Ectoplasmator. It's it's nice to have for a little bit of XP, but upkeeping the essence has always been a pain. And here is the first of our big Slayer unlocks. Learn how to fletch broad arrows and bolts. I just feel like getting my banked fletching XP turned into the real thing. So, boom, there we go. Oh, and a deployable herb burner unlock now. That's pretty useful for these low-tier herbs that I'm picking up if I'm not going to use, you know guams on attack potions, and I may as well burn them for a little XP, right? Well, this took a lot longer than normal, given that I've only been using it for Aberrant Spectre tasks and all of the trash tasks in between for point boosting, but there is level 5. Yeah, 91k invention. Let's see where that puts me. 24. Uh, so I'm about 50k away from 27, which is the real goal, but I have all of these things that I can research, so maybe they'll get me there. Also, <laughs> 20 in all skills. Felt like getting some of my lower level skills up and, you know, I was going for different invention components, so that kind of plays into it too. Um, got my summoning up to 57 and construction up to 56 so far. I think I'm going to do my monthlies a little bit early this month as opposed to, you know, on the final day. Because uh, I've got some stuff going on in, in life and I don't want to, uh, to miss them by chance. So that's something I'll probably be taking care of uh, later tonight. Also, hey, you know, working on your lowest level skill just means your total level goes up faster. And, uh, yeah, I like to see that number grow. And that right there is a good feeling. Not only did I survive being the pet tank without a beast of burden carrying food for me, but I lived through the full kill. It's time to get rewarded. Uh, well, you know what? It's not that bad, to be honest. Like, these are all pretty decent things. You know, Baynite... U logs, Dragonstone, they, they're all pretty decent. Okay, there's a nice milestone hit, level 70 fletching, which unlocks Within the Light and Branches of Darkmire. Both of these are very important quests, of course. Knocking out 70 already uh, is because I want to do Branches of Darkmire somewhat soon. I'm hoping that, uh, you know, I'll have that woodcutting requirement knocked out pretty soon. So I've been sitting here staring at the stupid plant for like the last five minutes, but here... With this, I am done with all of the easy and medium wilderness tasks, so time to go claim those rewards. And here we are, all of these beautiful lamps which are going straight into Herblore, the one and only. Uh, not going to regret this at all at any point because, boom, yeah, it's, it's nice just seeing those levels. I, I went ahead and did this because I just... Kind of felt like knocking it out, claiming that, you know, 100,000 XP or whatever it was. Uh, and because I'd be doing it, you know, pretty soon anyway. And there's my first time completing familiarization. Let's take the box of summoning ingredients 
and get my first piece of the shaman set. Monthly god statues done to pick up 60 construction, which unlocks teak construction contracts, uh, which I'm looking forward to trying out, actually. Uh, I want to see just how fast the XP is uh, compared to, you know, the normal method. Um, and actually, considering I don't have, uh, you know, cheap butlers or anything right now anyway, it's, it's probably my best method uh, to begin with. And to end off this week, there's completion of The World Wakes, a really important quest because it gives access to all of those great ultimate abilities. Uh, but also, I'm looking specifically for the Slayer Lamp, and if I pop that, hey, that's 73 Slayer for Jungle Strike Worms, which is nice. Oh, and it's also 2,000 total level. So there we go. That's it for this episode. I'm actually going to be taking a bit of a vacation this next weekend, so I'm going to miss out on a few dailies. The The progress is going to be a little slow. Expect the next episode to be a little delayed, but, you know, uh, we'll, we'll get to that uh, when we get there. So thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next one.